guys apologies if you're joining me for the second time our first video we're doing on kimchi just suddenly ended our live um, broadcast ended so let's go for round two I was talking about what we're doing in Bridget's healthy kitchen today the home of healthy delicious is I am teaching you guys how to make kimchi now kimchi is arguably one of the healthiest foods on the planet it is known as a functional food and science has finally caught up to thousands and thousands of years of, of kimchi being consumed in Korea and in Asia and finally science has caught up and said yeah it is really healthy um, so what I'd like to do with you guys today is we'll talk a bit more about these health benefits because there's just so many health benefits of kimchi but I'm also just going to show you guys how to do the recipe because it's pretty fabulous and it's one of those foods that you could ideally consume a serving which is you know just a bit less than a handful a serving of kimchi every day is going to help your body and it's going to help your weight journey in so many incredible ways so if you're joining me for the second time welcome we I made that one a bit of a quick a bit of a quick intro because I want to get into the recipe um, as I was saying the kimchi that I'm making today actually comes I have the recipe and more from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, the green book. So it is in there if you're looking for a, a written copy of the recipe and you've got the green book, then that's all you need to do. It is totally in there. But kimchi, um, you know, as I was saying, it's so incredibly healthy. And it's one of those foods when you look at it and you go, isn't that just cabbage? <laughs> How can cabbage be one of the healthiest foods on the planet? Trust me, it is pretty incredible. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, once I find the recipe, because of course I lost the recipe, is I'm gonna make the sauce that we're going to put onto the uh, kimchi. So this is kind of a little bit spicy. If you like spicy food, you're gonna love this. Or if you've, you've always wanted to make kimchi, or you love Korean food, or you've always wondered what kimchi is, and you've heard about its wonderful health benefits, this is a class for you. All right, come on down to my bench so we can start to get into it and as I'm saying it's not that hard to do oh my my camera's on a really weird angle today oh there we go <laughs> that one's on sorry sorry if you guys were down on a weird angle all right so um it is quite easy to do but we're gonna make the sauce to go with it first so I've got my pot here straight onto my scales because it always makes it so much easier when we just measure straight onto our scales we need to have little cups and little you know little jars and stuff it all goes straight in here and the first thing that we're going to start with when it comes to our, um, our sauce that's going to go onto our kimchi is I'm going to be adding fiber syrup to it. Now fiber syrup, as you guys know, is a prebiotic. And that is what feeds the probiotic. So not only is this kimchi amazingly um, intense with the amount of probiotics that you get for it, which is incredibly good for your gut health, as you know, we have now just added fiber syrup, which means we are making it into a prebiotic as well. Told you it's really healthy. All right, the next ingredient I'm going to be adding is a bit of tamari, and we want 40 mils of tamari goes in there. That's gonna help not just with color and flavor, but it's also, you know, the, the soy in there has got some really good health benefits because this is also a fermented food. And what we're creating here um, is fermented products that are really, really good for our gut. So soy is fermented, which is fabulous. And the next ingredient that I'm adding is also fermented. And that is Korean red pepper paste. It looks like that. In Korean, and I do apologize if I get the pronunciation wrong, in Korean, it's known as gochugam. So um, when you go, this is available uh, in pretty much, you know, pretty much every Asian supermarket that you go to. It's really, really popular. And it's a red pepper paste. So look in your Asian supermarket. You're after red pepper paste, Korean red pepper paste, or gochugang. I think Mahi might even be able to throw up a link for that just so you guys know what's what it kind of looks like. Right, red pepper paste, this is up to you. This is what's going to add the spice to our kimchi. So it's up to you how much you add. If you're not really sure about spice, you probably want to go for half a tablespoon. If you like it spicy, you could go up definitely to a tablespoon of um, the gochugang goes in there as well. And the next ingredient helps to balance things out is I'm just going to be putting in a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar goes in there. And then of course, <laughs> how could we forget my two favorite containers in my fridge? We're going to be adding in, ooh, ooh, making a mess, we're going to be adding in some chopped ginger, 
finely chopped ginger and some finely chopped garlic as well. And remember, this is just a sauce. We're gonna add so much more flavors to the kimchi as well. So when it comes to our ginger, I'm gonna be adding in half a tablespoon of lovely, lovely ginger. And it smells so good. This is freshly, freshly um, chopped. I just did it this morning and it smells amazing. And then when it comes to our garlic, we're gonna be doing another half tablespoon of lovely chopped garlic goes in there as well. So all we need to do with this, it's a bit sticky because of the fiber syrup and the, the red pepper paste. That's absolutely okay. You can already see, just by me giving it a bit of a stir, we've already got a bit of a sauce kind of happening there. So I'm just gonna pop that straight onto the element behind me and get that going. I just need to bring it to the boil and um, yeah, easy. Couple minutes is all it needs to cook off there. So I've just got that on, that can tick away as we start to get into the cabbage. Because kimchi is, let's be honest, kimchi is all about the cabbage, isn't it? And I have a wonderful specimen of cabbage in front of me. Now, um, the type of cabbage that you pick for your kimchi is really, really important. You want to go for a cabbage that looks like this. So this is known as a Chinese cabbage or a napper cabbage, depending on where you are in the world. So this is the type of cabbage, have a really good look at it, that's what you're after. Um, making kimchi with normal white cabbage just will not have the same effect. It's really, the power also sits in that wonderful uh, cabbage there as well. So when it comes to our cabbage, choose the right one, most definitely, and, in the, and you need a whole head of cabbage for this recipe as well. And I've, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, what you will find that this is actually really well priced right now because you know it's winter and we have all these types of vegetables that are pretty cheap. So this is a good time to make your kimchi. So what you wanna do, I'm just checking on my, yes, my sauce looks good behind me. What you wanna do is first, you know, just taking a knife and you want to take off about an inch, maybe two inches from the base of the, cabbage this sort of thing there you can either keep this literally cut it small and throw it into your pickled vegetables and remember it's pickled wheat it's all about the pickles you, you don't have to throw that away there is goodness in there but when it comes to our kimchi we don't want to have that that hard bit at the end but don't throw that away like literally put it into your pickles it will be amazing so i'm not throwing that away there but what i am going to do and i have washed my washed and dried my cabbage before i started is taking all the leaves you just want to cut the leaves into pretty big chunks because you'll be really really surprised at how small like this is the size of the chunk yeah huge you'll be really surprised at how small the kimchi actually becomes once you have done the fermenting part so those just go straight in a really big bowl I'm using because you'll see even by the end of this that my bowl will be filled up with cabbage for last large chunks some people even just cut their their entire cabbage into like quarters um, and, and serve it like that but I quite like dealing with these really large chunks so like that, maybe in half again break that into your big bowl and make sure your bowl like it's ideal to use a bowl that's either plastic um, or glass or as I'm doing I'm using a really big metal bowl and what you want to avoid is a bowl that's known as being reactive because of the salt and the fermentation that's happening within this product um, if you have a bowl that is made of materials like copper and stuff then that bowl will possibly leach into the kimchi and you'll ruin it so you want to go for metal plastic or um, glass is the ideal bowls all right my sauce is smelling good as I'll say, you just want to kind of bring it to a boil and let it cook for a couple of minutes. My cabbage is looking great. The next stage of this kimchi is we need to add the salt. And it's the salt that is going to bring the fermentation. It is the salt here that is going to make this incredibly delicious and incredibly healthy. So I'm adding to the cabbage three tablespoons of salt. Now if you are freaking out right now and go, that is a lot of salt then you can be absolutely assured, I read a study that was published in the Journal of Frontiers of My Microbiology, published in September the 16th, that said that the salt that you add to the, to the cabbage or to the kimchi 
that gets nullified by all the potassium that you've got in there. So if you're worrying that the salt content's really, really high, you need not worry because the potassium that we have naturally occurring in the cabbage actually nullifies the sodium um, in, in here, the salt, the sodium, which means if you have high blood pressure or if you have hypertension, you don't have to worry about consuming your kimchi. Now we've got a question, Mahi. The question is, can you use maple syrup or honey instead of fibrous syrup? So the question was, can you use maple syrup or honey instead of fibrous syrup? No! <laughs> maple syrup or honey, I know it's, it, it sounds like a really healthy thing, but if your goal with being part of Bridget's Healthy Kitchen and using the recipes is weight loss, is um, getting healthy, getting off your sugar high, then honey and maple syrup will cause you to be on your sugar high, it will spike your insulin response, you'll go into, you won't be in fat burning mode, you'll go into sugar high mode. And also the thing that I'm, I'm most concerned about is when it comes to honey and maple or rice malt syrup or any of those type of syrups that are sort of, you know, they're being touted as being healthy. The thing that really worries me is that when you continue to have honey, maple, rice malt syrup in your diet, you stay, especially if you already are, you stay addicted to sugar. So we're trying to get us all off that sugar addiction. So I would suggest if you don't have any fiber syrup, this is one that you want to not make right now and wait till you have your fiber syrup. Because it'll take you off that sugar roller coaster. Yes, by the way, I'm massaging, if you hadn't noticed, clean hands, clean hands. We're gonna be massaging this cabbage. This is the fun part, this really is. This is the part, you, like at the moment, you're like, what are you doing? It doesn't seem like I'm actually doing any work. Just wait. You want to massage this for about 10 minutes, but you watch as the cabbage begins to change. Yes, we have another question, Mahi. Uh, if you don't want any spice in it, just leave out the, um, the red pepper paste, and what you will have is known as white kimchi. So still do the sauce with the, with the tamari and the fiber syrup, you know, and add the ginger and the garlic, but no pepper. None of that red pepper paste and you will have, yes, white kimchi, which is still delicious. And what a great question. Thank you for that, Linda. So as you will have noticed, I've been doing this only for a minute and already we had sort of cabbage here. Now it's beginning to flatten because this massaging is really, really important. This massaging is meaning that that salt is getting into the fibers and the leaves of our cabbage and it doesn't take long for it to just start to shrink really really amazingly so it's shrinking away and like i said it's, this is the, probably the hardest part you know you've got a massage but it's not heavy work and i find it really therapeutic you know that i can get my my clean hands involved but also to watch you know this functional food this unbelievably healthy food being made before our eyes, just, it's therapeutic. And I feel like I'm, I'm not just doing me a favor, but obviously I'm doing a favor to, you know, to all you guys who are watching, but also, you know, to Mahei and the kids that are gonna be eating this wonderful kimchi. So um, that, that same journal I was talking about, the Journal of Frontiers of Microbiology, when it published its study, you know, and, and the scientists came up with just the most amazing research. And I think when you look at it, it's something that potentially people in Korea have known for thousands of years. Because the kimchi first, um, it was first published in a, in a book in Korea in 1145 AD. Would you believe, would you believe that? The, the health benefits of kimchi, which is pretty amazing. So Koreans and have long known how good this stuff is. And science has finally caught up. And what science is saying is that daily consumption of kimchi will not only help to pre prevent me metabolic illnesses, so illnesses caused by a diet, but it will also help with chronic heart disease, hypertension, uh, even stroke. Um, but the wonderful benefits are that, you know, kimchi is so high in antioxidants, so it will help to fight disease. It is also anti-obesity, so it will help you to lose weight. It's anti-cancer, it's anti-aging in the brain, so consuming kimchi will help make your brain younger and it will also help to lower your cholesterol. So it's one of these foods that's just so incredibly functional and then let's not even talk about the immune system being built so you fight off you know, illnesses and disease and then of course there's all the probiotics. All the probiotics in kimchi 
which really do make it, it's literally number one for gut health. If you were to, if you were to, if I was to name one food, kimchi is number one for gut health. We have all these fermented abilities here. Now, have you noticed how this is now looking really, really, really flat? And if I were to continue just doing this action, this action for another five minutes, um, I would have it even flatter. So what you need to do, like literally set your alarm for 10 minutes and then just stand there and do this and feel really good about it because you're doing yourself such an amazing favor. You're doing your body a favor. But after your 10 minutes is up, what you then want to do is you want to, um, you want to cover this cabbage with just enough water, just enough water to cover it, just cold water, yeah? Cover it with cold water, ideally filtered water, cover your cabbage, and then take another bowl and press down on your cabbage. And this is gonna help it to ferment for you. And then take the heaviest pot that you own, mine is actually a cast iron pot, and apply that to the top of the bowl, and that's gonna help to press the kimchi down or the cabbage down and you want to leave it like this for about one hour about 60 60 minutes it can go up to you know 120 if you want to but a minimum of 60 minutes you want to leave this pot pressing down on the cabbage just like that when the time is up so when you when you've done the the, the 60 minutes you obviously remove the bowl and the pot and this remember this is full of water you tip the water out and then you put all the cabbage into a colander and you rinse it really, really well under cold running water. So you want to actually take off some of that, that salt. And also what you'll find is that, um, you know, already, see, look at the liquid that I've got. Can you guys see that liquid that I've got in there already? So you want to get rid of that. So press it down for one hour, hour with water covered, covered with water. Press it down with your heaviest pot that you own. And then when the time is up 60 minutes, you want to drain all the liquid off and then run this in cold running water under, um, you know, in a colander to really extract all that water. And give it a good clean while it's doing that as well. Like take your time with that step because you want to get rid of, you know, any of the liquid that's been on there. So um, what you will get for your efforts is this is what it will look like when the time is up and you have drained it really well. Yes, I've got a question from uh, Mahi. Yeah, just asked, can I add fish can you add fish sauce? Um, no, I would probably stay away from fish sauce. It'll, 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 um, the, the flavor of kimchi I think will be too far altered. Whereas you wanna stay away from, cause unless you've got a really good quality fish sauce, some fish sauce are not made with very good ingredients. I would stay away from it and stick to all the fermented foods you have in here already. Um, just give them a bit of a go. So that's our cabbage drained really small look at it it's like really <laughs> this is the base of it so once again clean hands but this time what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some gloves because i want to mix the rest with my hands as well and we are going to get stuck in to this kimchi so just because we're using obviously you know the red pepper paste it may stain fingers this is a good time maybe you want to add some gloves and then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. We're nearly, nearly there. So the first ingredient that I'm going to be adding is a few more vegetables. We're going to give this kimchi even more flavor, even more taste. So I have in here the chopped green part of um, spring onions. They're known scallions. They're also known as so you know the big, you know the big spring onions with the green part. You only want to take, you want to take a bunch of those and just chop up the green parts. You can keep the white parts, which have a more of an oniony flavor. You can keep that for something else. So that's the first thing. We're going to put the green tops of the spring onion, or the scallion goes in there first. I am going to be adding some onion, and I've got a medium-sized red onion, thinly sliced as you, as you can see. That's going to go in there. I also have radish. Look, isn't it cute? And what I did, I'll show you guys how I did it, is I chopped the radish into matchsticks. I find that doing it by hand is way easier been doing it um, with a mandolin or something like that because especially if your radishes are really small like mine are so you just want to you know once again take your time this is a whole bunch of radish by the way a whole bunch of radish and you want to create little matchsticks or thin little strips of it so you cut it really small 
and then you add it into your kimchi. So nice and small, little matchsticks or little slivers go in there and then of course that goes into our bowl. So those are all our vegetables that we're adding into our kimchi today and already check out the colour, it, it looks absolutely fantastic. But uh, let's also not forget that we're going to be adding a few more bits and pieces. So I'm just going to turn to the recipe because I need to make sure that I don't forget anything in there. <laughs> I'm the worst. People what always... Oh, what page is it in? My hate is asking me. It is on page 218. Check out the photo. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? It's on page 218. And it's so funny. People always assume that I can, I can remember all the ingredients in my recipes, but I've literally created hundreds and hundreds of recipes um, and it's really hard to remember, so I don't want to mess this up. So I've opened up the recipe, 218 and more. So we've got all the ingredients in there. The last thing that we need to add is just a little bit of, bit more of our finely, finely um, cut up garlic. Uh, sorry, ginger, and I'm going to be adding three tablespoons. So it's a decent amount of ginger, and trust me, you will enjoy the flavour of this so incredibly much. So we've got our ginger, and then the last one is garlic, and in the recipe it says four cloves, which is around about a tablespoon of finely chopped up garlic goes in there. So the last ingredient, the very last one that we need to add to start getting our kimchi all together, is we have to go back to that wonderful sauce that we created before. This smells amazing. For people who don't like spicy food, I would still suggest you give it a go because it's that red pepper paste, that Korean red pepper paste, gochugang, that really gives kimchi its very, very distinct flavor. And it is stunning. Once again, it's a fermented product. So we're adding all these fermented products into, into our kimchi. So give it a bit of a stir. And then that can just go straight over the top. Don't waste any. Do not waste any. Get it all. You don't want to waste any of this goodness. Because obviously, you know, it's got all the, the, the goodness from the fiber syrup. It's got all the goodness from the gochugong, from the fermented red pepper How paste. Is that 70 mils of fiber syrup that was? 17. 17. 7-0 of fiber syrup. All right. That's what the gloves are for. Get involved. Oh, it's a bit warm too because this fiber syrup is still a little bit warm. So this is when you need to once again, using those gloved hands, get in there. Oh, the smell. The smell is so good. <laughs> Isn't that look good? And just you know, get in there with your fingers and make sure that that sauce is touching every single vegetable that you have in here. Now, right now, it's looking... A little bit pale but trust me trust me as this fermented or pickled food whatever you want to call it sits and it begins to mature the color will deepen it doesn't mean the chili or the spice deepens it's just the color will deepen so much when it comes to that so it feel it's feeling really good look we've got some we've got some juice coming out of that which is wonderful all we need to do now is think about how we're gonna, what sort of jar we're gonna use, and more importantly, how clean is that jar? So I have over here, I'm gonna to touch the outside. I have over here an extremely clean jar. This is a sterilized jar. So you can either sterilize your jars, and it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a one liter jar. You can either sterilize your jar by putting it into the dishwasher on a hot cycle, or you can sterilize your jar by putting it into a big pot, covering it with water, and allowing it to boil gently so more of a simmer for about three to five minutes and obviously take it out really carefully allow it to dry naturally and then you have a sterilized jar really important because your kimchi will last if you store it correctly your kimchi will last in your in your fridge for at least a month possibly even longer and the longer it sits there the better the qualities of health benefits are as well so taking your kimchi this is now a matter of you Placing it into the jar, and you kind of want to push down on it. You kind of want to, you know, you almost want to shove it in there. You want to get as much as you can in there, and it needs to be tight. You don't want to have any air bubbles in there as this sits and ferments. Because remember, this is a salted, um, this is a salted food. 
So that fermentation that's about to happen now is really, really important. So eh, look at that, oh, look at that juice. Push down, you're gonna get all of this into this one little jar. Trust me. If you find that your jars are too small or your cabbage is really, really big, then absolutely feel free to put it into a couple of jars. So I'm just gonna pour up a little bit of that liquid, just a little bit, so I can then add the rest of that cabbage. Yay! So it it's... Is, uh, looks so young, aren't you? <laughs> it is so delicious and it's so good for you. So now, you know, we've got this um, jar absolutely packed. Absolutely packed and we've pushed down to make sure that we've gotten rid of all the air bubbles that may be in there because we don't want air bubbles. We want it to ferment very, very naturally. Don't throw this away. This is delicious. You could literally throw that through a stir fry and it would be amazing. So don't, don't throw that away. But what you now want to do is taking, of course, a really clean lid and pushing it down. And once again, you're going to really compact that kimchi into the jar. And now that it's at this stage, let me get rid of my gloves. Now that it's at this stage, you want to leave it in the fridge to continue to ferment. Remember, the fermentation process helps to um, mature all the goodness in there. So it needs to ferment for a while. And we're going to leave our kimchi. Woohoo! We're going to leave our kimchi in the fridge for three days minimum, ideally about five. I know it's hard, you have to wait, but good things take time. And then start to include a little bit of kimchi. Doesn't matter what you're eating, just put a little bit of kimchi on the side of whatever it is you're eating, whatever recipe is gonna help in so many incredible ways to improve your overall health. As I was saying, this is arguably, well scientists now agree, one of the healthiest foods on the planet. That's why it's called a functional food, because it's not just about the taste, and the taste is amazing, and it's incredible, it's the function that that food has in our bodies, which makes it really awesome. So enjoy this recipe. If you do make it, please feel free to share it with us on our, in our private group. Share a photo or share a video of you and your kimchi. I would love to see um, what you guys come up with. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you, um, wherever you are in the world, that you are safe and you are well. Enjoy that recipe. Get into the kimchi, get yourself healthy, and we'll see you next time. We've got another couple of uh, classes coming up for our pickle week. So it's it's still all go, and I look forward to seeing you guys really, really soon here in the kitchen. Take care.